Welcome to our Basecamp Barn Project. Last episode was a whirlwind as we pushed hard to get the concrete floor poured before the cold of winter set in. This week we take a breather and preview our next step. We'll talk about ICFs, window bucks, and more. Let's get back to work. Looks like we've got a little bit of time to kill this morning as we clean up from last night's snow. Let's start by talking about concrete. When concrete is first poured, it behaves much like a liquid, a very thick liquid. But when it hardens, it becomes as solid as a rock. In order to use concrete, we must first make a form so we can contain the liquid in the shape we want it until it hardens. This is where ICFs come in. ICF, or insulated concrete forms, are made to allow the concrete to flow into the inside of the form and then solidify. By themselves, they're only strong enough to contain the concrete. Once the concrete has been poured, the forms become part of the wall structure itself. The ICF then acts as the insulation on both sides to allow the concrete and its thermal mass to maintain a pleasant temperature throughout the cycle of the day with minimal heating and cooling. On the outside, we can apply just about any siding we want. It will look like any other home. On the inside, we'll use sheetrock to create ordinary looking rooms. Other than the thick window sills, one may never know that there's a sophisticated wall assembly between them and the outside elements. This ICF assembly will replace traditional wall structures of wood framing and pink insulation. It's stronger and more efficient than most wooden walls. And inside the ICF house, it'll be absolutely quiet kind of like living in a stone castle. So part of the deal here with cutting and stacking blocks is we've got to align all the webs. And if you look down in here, all the web webs align all the way down. See how they have these little teeth? These little teeth connect and latch together but you have to have webs on top of webs all the way down. And they're marked here on the sides of the Nodura. That's where the webs are. They're eight inches apart and they have lines every two inches. So you can use those to judge where your cuts are. And so that's part of the challenge here is when we're stacking blocks, you know, we just don't have a, a certain dimension that we use. I mean, we do. This was 20 inches, but it had to have a 2-inch gap on this side to line up here, and it had to have a 2-inch gap on this side to line up here. So you have to put your cuts in the right spot in your sections that you're cutting in order for everything to line up. So that's the challenge with cutting these Nodura blocks is you got to have two or three dimensions with every cut to make sure that you do have this alignment. Here's what a window buck does. Its dimensions on this inside here are the rough opening dimensions for the window that's going to be placed here. The bottom has to be open, you know, to get concrete in here. So that's why this bottom is open. And all the sides, you know, have that angle cut in there so that concrete goes all the way to this face. There is a piece of insulation, you know, behind it to, uh, to separate it from the, the concrete. And then we cut the blocks 
you know, to fit this dimension with a little bit of wiggle room. And then we've supported it for the concrete pour, but all this stuff will come out and we'll have a, a raw wooden the attached to structure that we can screw the window to and screw any inside uh, trim to and then we'll put a sill bottom plate on the bottom down here to cover all that up so I've made it tall enough to fit everything in there and so that's what I call a window buck the door bucks are very similar. They just have a little bit more wood on them. I have put a full on 2 by 12 on this part here just to have more room and more security and more beef to screw a door into because doors are going to be opening and being used. All these windows here are fixed and they have their own you know window jams and stuff. This window here is an opening window, just like the other one in the bedroom, but it's not going to need any more support than a normal window will have. And so that's what we're going to assemble here today, this morning is, you know, these other window bucks. So I built them, you know, in, in these pieces here, so they wouldn't take up much room in my shed, because they were taking up a lot of room. So I just need to screw them together. And so that's what a window and door buck is. So you can see the, the V-shaped or the angle cut. So when the concrete fills it, it'll fill it and lock it into place. So as the concrete cures and this wood possibly dries out, it won't go anywhere. It'll kind of keep itself locked in place. So that's the idea with these angle cuts being the way they are. It's kind of like a keyway. It's making its own keyway and keeping it in, keeping it in place. I'm just helping today. You gonna help me screw this together, puppy? Hmm? Can help me screw this together? So I just put a couple screws in just to kind of get it started together. Then we'll square it up and lock it in. Right at 93. And just a tick less, but that's pretty freaking close. We'll screw these guys in and that'll lock it into, into place. And then we'll put some more screws and get it all assembled and then we can move it around and it will stay, you know, pretty square.
There's a window buck. So I just want to show you a little bit around. We've got a blueprint table. So here's where all the blueprints, you know, are staying. And so it's a nice dry, dry table and got some wind blocks to hold the paper down. We've got a receiving area here. <laughs> this is a nice area to have the trailer back in and we can offload stuff. So this is kind of my initial receiving area. We've got a, a rebar cutting and bending area here. So that's my rebar cutter and my rebar bender. All of my rebar is just outside of this door here. We've got uh, some wood stationed here. This is kind of what we're using on all the support structure on the outside. So I've got a, a storage area here. This is all my cuts of my blocks that I can reuse. This is the cutting area. So we got two by fours and blocks and, and stuff set up here for cutting not only the Nodura blocks but any of the bucks that we are using or any of the other wood will end up cutting here in this in this area. I've got my wagon that I pull in every night. It's got all my tools in it. And then we got a little lunch area here. Now puppy loves sitting in the sun. So this is kind of our little station here for taking a quick break. Um, so this is kind of the work zone as it stands right now uh, at some point everything along the walls will have to be cleared out so that we can run the scaffold around which we're doing pretty good we're pretty close um, but nonetheless this is uh, this is the work area here and another thing you got to work around is you can't put blocks on top of other blocks without the blocks being clean. And boy do they get dirty after a pour or even after a snowstorm. I wanted to show you the tape job. So here's what I put down over all of the tops of the blocks was some clear film four inch wide thick tape. And so you're supposed to just be able to peel it off, see? But they made such a mess because they had to use the larger uh, tube to fill it because the smaller tube was getting blocked a couple times. So they had to go to that. And so it's made quite a mess almost all the way down. You can see that. My first course that I was taking off that took, you know, over two hours the north wall was still a little wet and so it didn't break off easy but I'll show you I can get the screwdriver here what I've been doing is I've just been kind of beating it a little bit just to get some of the big chunks off and you can get the other chunks off and then the tape pretty much comes right off you can get most of those chunks off but by that point it might be torn you see I can get quite a ways down it sticks to everything but the more full parts are, are junk like this right here Makes a mess. And then you can get in here while it's dry and pop off the block. You know, that's solidified. Mm, without too much trouble. Some of them are in there pretty good. Anyway, that's the chore right here is getting all this tape off and getting these things clean. 
and then I'll show you once I get it, you know, 80% done. I'll take the blower here and I'll blow out and do a final pass before we put the next block on. There, we did a quick blow. That way I can see like areas I need to come back to, like right in here, there's still stuff stuck in a couple little other places, but you blow off all the debris that you made and see how close you got. I just scraped all the snow off of the floor here to hope that it'll dry before it freezes tonight. I'm hoping that the sunshine here will thaw out a few things in these teeth because I need to be able to put a block on there and they're full of water or ice that won't happen so I'm hoping I'm hoping the Sun will melt them this afternoon if we can get some sunlight looks like we are maybe I can blow all the water out with the blower to get them dry dry maybe I put a layer on this afternoon so the top layer is dry tomorrow I don't know but all this water here is not gonna is or the ice is not gonna help get these blocks to block together it's gonna be even worse than the dirt or the clods of concrete that I picked out for the, the layer below I didn't want it to be a complete ice skating rink tomorrow because it's supposed to get into the teens tonight so that means everything will refreeze right doggy yeah well I got a surprising amount done this afternoon after I snow shoveled all this look how dry it is that's pretty good and then the Sun just set so we got a gorgeous sunset but I got almost four blocks up everywhere I ran a, basically out of blocks they're coming tomorrow. It's supposed to be in the teens in the morning. So anyway, <laughs> tried to get as much done as I could today. So now, uh, basically all the tops of all of these pieces now are dry because they're fresh pieces. Even across the top of all the window, this side here. So now, as long as it doesn't rain too bad, few sprinkles would be fine but I don't have to worry about frozen ice you know getting in there that I have to wait for it to thaw everything's pretty good we're turned a corner here the next layer it's got to have rebar in before I put the next one on top and then the next one on top I'm gonna do continuous blocks so I got to do double cuts everywhere Nothing, nothing hard, just something else to do. Take up a little bit of time. But I got 42 blocks coming. Maybe enough, I'd have to recount once we get a little bit taller. But I got this cut block layer and then one more layer going up basically everywhere because that's gonna be my 10 and a half foot level and that's what we're pouring to so that's the next pour I might be able to get there if we have good weather the next couple of days heck we might be able to pour early next week maybe before the storm I got another storm coming in Tuesday or Wednesday so made good progress today I think we're gonna call it a night gorgeous sunset see ya